A friend once asked me, is the water in your bottle or is the bottle in the water? Good evening, everyone. I'm here to talk to you about plastic in, in our food. So what is wrong with this water bottle? Anyone? It's a plastic bottle, obviously. <laughs> um, but can I get a volunteer now who would like to maybe eat this bottle of water, the plastic bottle? Anyone? I don't think anyone prefers to uh, eat plastic, neither do I. However, I just drank some plastic. Did you know that 83% of tap water sampled worldwide contain plastic particles in it? And plastic can be found in unusual places. This is my favorite. Dinner of fish and chips. One third, one third of the fish caught in the English Channel have plastic contamination. 95% of the salt has plastic in it. So does, my, so does my honey. And the chicken, the mussel, even my beer has plastic in it. So plastic was literally in the water I was drinking, the food I was eating, the beer I was drinking. Plastic was on everything on my dinner table. I didn't believe this. I didn't, I didn't believe this. So I went around the country talking to all the universities, trying to find out if this is true. But I had no budget, and I could not hire their labs. So I had to go and get my own microscope from Amazon for 20 quid. <laughs> you can do it too. It's pretty simple. And I went around the country sampling uh, water, you know. Anyone can do it. Uh, this is what you will find. This is my small home experiment. And uh, you can see this dark, dark thing. Those are microfibers in my tap water. Even bottled water has that. The question here is, what are microfibers? So microfibers are those small, tiny plastic particles that leach out of your fleece jackets from the washing machine. And you may be wondering now, how has this plastic ended up on this dinner plate? on a dinner table in my plate. Let me take you through one of the possible journeys. I go to Camden Market, buy my bottle of water, use it for just 20 minutes, and I put it in the bin, or worst case, I chuck in the canal. The wind and the rain blows and overflow, blows and takes the content of an overflowing bin to the canal, from the canal to the River Thames, from the Thames to the North Sea, from the North Sea to the ocean. In the vast ocean, it breaks down into small particles called microplastics. And these microplastics act like a magnet. They attract all the chemical compounds known to cause cancer and all other illness. And fish eat these plastics, and we eat the fish. Yeah, and, and we eat the fish. Studies report brain damage, sexual issues, and hormonal issues in a marine life, possibly humans. These microplastics can actually break down into further small particles called nanoplastics. And then they can get into our organs and our tissues and things like that. As of today, we do not know the real impact on human life. But I, I think you can guess, uh, you know, to say the least, would, be, would not be the beneficial. Now knowing that there is plastic in my glass of water, will you drink this water, sir? Or would you give this fish and chips to your child, madam? But the irony is yes. The irony is yes. But if we continue doing this, we'll become the fish contaminated. I was, I was really shocked when I heard all this. And uh, what do you think a British Indian would do to deal with shock? Uh, I went and had my cup of tea. <laughs> that was a refreshing sip of polypropylene. <laughs> Even these tea bags contain plastic in them. This is amazing. Now, do not get me wrong. Plastic is a fantastic material. Look around you. The chair, uh, yeah, the bottles there, you know, your shoes, your jacket, everything is plastic. If I had nuclear waste, I'll store them in plastic bags as well. They will not degrade. Yeah, we rely on it too much, but we value plastic as convenient, cheap, and disposable. Can I get a show of hands? 
How many of us are worried about the dangers of plastic in our diet? Right. Can I get a show of hands? How many of us want to do something to prevent this danger? Right. You must be wondering, why am I telling you all this? This is my school in Assam in Northeast India. And as a child, I was surrounded by water, but I could not swim. And that's when I thought logically I should get into ocean racing. And I signed up to do the clip around the world race, to race a 70-foot yacht from London to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, by the time I got there, I learned how to swim. <laughs> thought I'd better do that. Ocean racing takes you to the most remote corners of the planet. Miles and miles from the shore, Henrik had to jump in to rescue these two turtles stuck in fishing net and plastic bottles. Beautiful. This is one of the instances, and we're lucky that we were there. There are many more instances like this, and we are not there. Imagine. This is really sad. Uh, so this um, bottles and a fishing net will still degrade, obviously, to microplastics, and the fish will eat them, and will the fish. Then I, after the ocean racing, I was back in London, uh, and I remembered what my friend asked me. Is my water in my bottle, or is my bottle in my water? And I started researching a lot. I, I got my own microscope and you know, went around the country doing stuff. And I wanted to share my findings with everyone. The mainstream media, uh, the mainstream media and luminaries like Sir David Attenborough were talking a lot about macroplastics. But, uh, uh, but the concern was still low. And I wanted to do something innovative and, and, and a wacky campaign to generate more awareness about plastic. Uh, I had seen a lot of, I had seen a lot of uh, plastic on the River Thames, and I collected a lot of plastic bottles on the river. And I thought I wanted, to, I wanted to cycle. Let me cycle across the whole length of the River Thames, collecting plastic and raising awareness. So I got my handmade bamboo bike together. I got a float on the left, a float on the right. I got a propeller and a rudder in the front, uh, two fishing nets behind me, and I was ready. <laughs> the, can you believe this is the first day of my trial? So the trial obviously did not go as expected. <laughs> they were not stuffers to get tough again. Uh, I capsized again. I could see my bike sinking in the water. I could see bubbles blowing from my bamboo. Uh, I could, my kit was wet, you know. It was dark, it was raining. And I thought for 10 seconds that this project was over. This project was over and that's it. But I can, I can be quite stubborn. I continued anyway. Got some more plastic. <laughs> <laughs> but continue anyway. Uh, this campaign worked out really great. People are like, huh, what the hell are you up to? They're looking at me like, off-road cycling, is it? Or uh, you cannot escape cyclists, not even on the river, can you? I was like, yeah. But I, I could tell and convey what I was trying to do with them. It was great, very, very impactful. I collected six, OK, this is how it went, by the way, forgot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it went, it went really well. And I collected 66 plastic items every day, 200 times of which goes to the landfill every minute in the UK right now. And now, back in London, I'm finding a lot of plastic in the canals. This fish, sampled from the River Thames, is contaminated with microfibers again. So the microfibers are those tiny particles that get released from the synthetic clothing and from there it goes from the washing machine to the uh, sewer system, from there to the treatment plant, to the river Thames, and from the river Thames to this fish, and onto our plate. Uh, I spoke about micro microplastics. Microfibers do not degrade in the ocean, but they leach out from our clothing. So we need to be careful about our clothing as well. Now knowing, now the question here is, do we want to be the fish? What can we do to stop becoming the fish? There's all this bad news, but the good news is that all of this is preventable. We can stop this. A uh, lot of, uh, of citizen-led campaigns against uh, straws, for example, for uh, plastic-free aisles, you know, 
for uh, water fountains are gaining a lot of momentum. A lot of latest issues are also happening right now, which is really, really great. A lot of innovations in alternative packaging is happening, circular economy. But what can we do to have some real tangible uh, impact? I invite you all to go plastic free. Just one day a week, plastic free Tuesday. What I would do, I would start with a list of plastic items I use every day and start checking them off one by one. For example, I can bring my own refillable water bottle. I can go to the cafeteria and drink my coffee. I can bring my own cutlery, you know. You can go to the uh, bulk, buy in bulk from the farmer's market and start cooking, for example. You, need to be, you can be careful while doing your uh, clothing uh, washing, you know, less frequently. And being careful in fast fashion. Or we can go and use our own uh, good old stainless steel razor blades or the good old pen. These are some of the ideas. You can find many more ideas if you search for hashtag Plastic Free Tuesday. Learn about it. Talk about it to your friends, to your family, to your colleagues. Because together, we can make a huge impact, and we have to do this. If you go plastic free just in this room for just one day a week, we will save one ton of plastic every year. Imagine if you can get three of your friends to do it, and three of their friends does it too. It would be a real start. Isn't this amazing? Please join me and share your achievements using hashtag Plastic Free Tuesday. And I shall see you next year to celebrate our success. I hope you agree with this idea that is worth not just spreading, but an idea worth doing. Let us do this for the sake of our world. Thank you very much.